All right, so before we get started today, I wanted to show you the newest sleeve chief drop that's going live at 8 p.m. today. I think it looks amazing. So if you're down to have fiery looking accessories, I think these are the sleeves for you. And of course, if you want to have a discount, make sure to use my code SHADOW for 5% off at checkout and go through my affiliate link in the description box below so you help support the channel as well. And with that, we can go ahead and get started with today's video, which is actually going to be the tech cards tier list. Yeah, we have about 50 cards, the usual tiers. So that's not waste any more time and get started but before that i want to encourage you to like the video if you liked it and of course share your thoughts in the comments down below so yeah first up we have zooking alpha <laughs> every single time this one is going in not worth it right now and um pretty much that's where it's hanging usually <laughs> it's just compared to cards that do a similar thing this one does less. You can compare it to cards like Pankratops, uh, like Kashira Fenrir, like just one for one stuff like Kaijus or even cards like Book of Moon or something. All of the ones I just listed do much more than Zooking Alpha. So yeah, this one just sadly, it's not exactly worth it. And then we have Anti-Spell Fragrance. <laughs> I have no idea why I just said the entire name out loud, but Anti-Spell I think should go in strong inside. It's just a very decent side deck card. And um, it's very strong. I'm a little biased. I I, I kind of hate it, <laughs> but it's very, very strong. Um, then we have the book cards. I think I'll put Book of Eclip Eclipse in Decent as well as Book of Lunar Eclipse. Both of them seem almost on the same power level right now in the Decent category. Like Eclipse is still a, a little better, but both of them seem like they'll only see play in certain situations where people will like decide to play it because their meta calls for them to do it. But I don't know. Yeah, lunar like, lunar eclipse is still a little bit worse, but both of them are just decent because Book of Moon is much much better. The one for one stuff is coming back. I think there's no more heavy combos and as much as there was before. There's diversity in the format. So cards like or decks I should say like Manadium and stuff like that still does combo stuff. And there's like Dragon Link and whatever. But for the most part, what people are putting up. Right now, it's just boards with not as many negates. We're going one for one with a disruption. I think it's very fair, and I think it's um, it, it's a it's an interaction we want to be going for right now. That's why cards like Kaiju's, Pankratops, all of that are going to be strong. For example, Pankratops should go in strong inside as well as Kaiju's. I think all of them are going to be very very impactful right now. Also because of the diversity, you want to be ready for as many different things as possible. So cards like these, which are kind of generic, are really good. And uh, I feel like Book of Moon can be made, 100%. And um, yeah, as well as Call by the Grave, like this one is just, like I usually say, the poster child for a strong in main. <clears throat> like it's a one, just play it, you know. <laughs> if you feel like you're going to be losing to hand traps and stuff like that, just play it because why not? Then we have Forbidden Chalice, and uh, I'll put this in Not Worth It. It just doesn't seem that great because it's not as strong of a one-for-one -one exchange as some of the other ones are, very similarly to Zooking Alpha, actually. Uh, then we have Change of Heart. This one should go in strong inside, 100%. It's just very nice, you know? Again, it's only a one-off, so you will probably include it because it doesn't take up much space and has... A, a, enough impact to justify putting it in your side deck at least in my opinion so yeah then we have cosmic and i already thought about like just back row removal beforehand because i was a little indecisive and what my conclusion was um i think cards like lightning storm evenly matched have more impact and that's why they will see play much sooner than something like Cosmic, even though Cosmic isn't exactly bad in like a Runic matchup or something like that. So I think I'll put it at like top of decent. And I was contemplating putting it in strong inside now for a second, but I don't think I should. Like Cosmic is an option for you. If you wanna play it, you are free to run it. And I think it is going to be putting in work, but I feel like right now what we need to be going for is mass removal, so. We'll get to cards like Evenly and Lightning Storm and talk about all of them. I'll put the cross out in specific. Very nice in a deck where you know what you want to be countering with it. And then we have Deep Barrier. I think it's a decent card inside. Like, it's fine, right? Labyrinth, of course, will be able to play it. And it's not bad against different matchups, but I don't know. Like, it's fine inside. 
we probably won't see it in every single deck but it's still an option and i feel like a dark hole should be put in strong inside it's amazing being able being able to use dark hole against a sprite board it just it just feels really really nice if you're able to bait the negate or bait the negate with this and play other cards whatever you do i think this is like a very very decent card and then we have dark ruler should probably go at like the top of strong inside and we can put kaijus below Dark Ruler is nice against Kashira, against Sprite, against these kinds of decks. Any kind of combo deck that you face, um, Dark Ruler is going to put in work. So I think this one is really, really strong right now. Then we have the Ruma Karma Cannon. This one has to go in specific because it pairs very well together with Thrust. And it's nice in Labyrinth as well, but if you play it with Thrust in other decks, you can also include it. So I think it's fair to put it in specific. I think it's strong, like it has impact. I just want to put it here because not every single deck can run it, but like together with Thrust, I think it has a lot of potential. Now we have Dinka. I don't know. <laughs> we can put it like indecent, maybe, but Labyrinth learned to play around it, and I don't think the surprise factor is exactly there anymore. So if you want to play it, <laughs> you can, but like I think it's fine here. Then we have um, D Fissure. And like, I guess we can find Macrocosmos as well. I don't think these cards are worth it. I genuinely don't. Like, decks like Flunder can play them. I think Pearly was able to run these cards, if I'm not mistaken. And um, right now, <laughs> these decks aren't exactly at the top of the power scale in, in the meta right now. So yeah, like Arise Heart is here. Like, cards like these are not going to hinder the meta to the point where they should be played. Then we have a uh, droplet and um, this one is kind of weird. I think I'll put it in specific. I'll put it at the top of specific and I'll elaborate. I think if Kashira starts to not fall off, but like see a bit less play with some other decks, um, you know, just being more played and being I don't know, better in some situations or whatever, then people might want to play Droplet again because they'll feel like they won't encounter Kashira as much. But this is like a very big if, you know? So Droplet is still not ideal against a Rice Heart. And just overall, I'm not personally a fan of Droplet. I feel like Dark Ruler does a much, much better job because Droplet actually takes your resources. And uh, if you're not playing a Graveyard Sanders strategy, I feel like this is just not worth it in my opinion but i'll put it in specific and you can decide if your i don't know random local or regional meta calls for you to play this card because there's not as much kashira then i guess it makes sense but you know that's pretty much it then we have enemy controller i think it's fine in specific like decks like sprite used to run this or like kashira of course but not every single version and the card is nice but it really depends on like what you want to be going for and um there's some other cards as well that maybe take up the slots that this would take. So specific, I think, is the category for it. It's an option for you, but you can decide. Eradicator also most definitely should go in specific because Labyrinth can utilize it and it's really strong in that deck, but that's pretty much it. It is busted though. <laughs> like, I totally understand why a lot of times people were calling for Eradicator to be banned. It's really, really strong. Uh, then we have Evenly, and this is what I was talking about. I feel like this should go in Goaded. And if I recall correctly, I don't think I put any hand traps in Goaded because some of them just don't feel like they have enough impact compared to board breakers. And that's why I think Lightning Storm as well should go in Goaded. Lightning Storm should probably be higher because of the versatility, which I really like about this card. And because it's only at two, you know, it's really nice. You can just put it even in your main deck if you want index like Striker or whatever, but mo mostly it's a side deck card. And you can just put this in and then the what used to be the third copy of Lightning Storm can now be like a um, change of heart or a Pankratops or something. I like it. I think I think the both of these cards have impact. And um, like I talked about before, there's not as many negates as there used to be. There still is. <laughs> like Baron <laughs> feels like it's in every single deck. But other than that, you know, I feel like these cards will have more impact moving forward. And then we have Lance specific right because only kashira can actually utilize it and if you want to play it in that deck you can do it then we have goes and match and uh floodgates are always so 
weird for me to put on these tier lists maybe that's just me but like a lot of times they feel like they have some kind of impact but only in specific situations so i think i will actually be placing gozen in specific because like if you flip it at the correct point in time you are maybe winning even but are you realistically putting this card in and betting on encountering these situations I don't think so. And also something to think about is the fact that not every single deck in the meta can effectively run floodgates because of their respective attributes and types and all of that. So I don't know. Like, I think I'll, yeah, let's just leave it in specific. But like, I don't know, there can be, could also go into specific. But I just feel like these, maybe with Vanquish Soul, this could prove itself useful against it but like rivalry as well you know i think floodgates are always going to be specific like if you can run them like there can be can be played by branded for example if you're willing to to put it in going first and just learning how to how to play around it i don't know they're specific um i would love to hear you guys' thoughts about floodgates in general i, I i'm really interested in that so feel free to share them if you want and uh, then we have Grave of the Super Ancient Organism. I don't know, I guess it's decent, right? It's not a it's not a bad card. Um top of decent. If you wanna play it, sure. But there are probably some better cards than this. But you can decide. Then we have Harpies. This just should go and go to it. It's just so 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 good because like like I was talking before, um you kinda need to play mass removal and harpies is much better than Twin Twister and Cosmic Cyclone in that regard. But like Twin Twister should probably go in in decent as well. Like the, these ones are just an option if you want, and then the grave card could go here. Then we have Herald of the Abyss. I don't think it's worth it. I don't think um, Pearly is going to see play to the point where you should play this, but it's still an option if it happens. That's why I'll like, leave it at the top of not worth it. And then we have Ibli, 100% a specific card, but when you play it, it's really, really strong if your opponent doesn't know how to deal with it. That's why also Dark Hole, I feel like, is better than Rageki because of Ibli. So... We can place Raigeki like at the top of Decent. It's not bad, but it just Darko does it better because of cards like these. And um, Kaiju Slumber is like bottom of Decent, I guess. I don't think it's worth running, but I'll still leave it here if you want to play it in a deck where you can really like go heavy on the Kaijus and the Slumber and all of that. Like other than that, I don't think it's exactly worth it, but let's just leave it here. Um, Actually, no, I changed my mind. I'll put it like, I'll put it like here. Top of not worth it. You can play it if you want. Then we have Kashira Fenrir and... Mm, I think Fenrir is specific. Uh, I'll place it like here because Vanquish Soul can utilize it. You need to think about cards like um, Pankratops, like... Kashira Fenrir, like Kurikara, which we're about to mention. Uh, Vanquish Soul can run all of these because of their attributes, which I think is like really, really cool. I love the synergy there. Um, but I think it should go in specific because overall, a card like Pankratops, in my opinion, is better because it can be chained. So you can very easily exchange with cards. And like I said, one for one exchanges are worth it right now to like put your everything into being able to come victorious out of those exchanges. Um, yeah. Kurikara. <laughs> Moving on. I think this card is very strong, but let me just decide where I want to place it. I think I'll put it here because I feel like with um, with some decks going down in popularity and more diversity just being present in the meta and we are at the beginning of the format, so things are a little uncertain still. So I think Kurikara has a ton of impact, but it is sort of on the level of Kaijus right now. So yeah, the card is still strong, but I feel like it might um, go down just a tiny bit in all of the hype and popularity, but it still has impact. And then we have Lava Golem. I think this one should go like at the bottom of Strong Inside because you really want to wait for the format to establish itself to the point where you know which decks Lava Golem is going to be really useful against. Sometimes decks will just end on like one problematic monster. And if you look at decks like, I don't know, Labyrinth, for example, what you want to be dealing with is the lady. You don't care about other things enough. So like, 
I don't know, that's why Kaiju, Santa Claus, all of these cards are a little better in my opinion. And the Sphere Mode should probably go like at the top of Descent because it's not bad, but like, I guess I'll put it like here. Yeah. And then Lava Golem could be a bit higher. Then we have Mind Control. Mm. I think Mind Control is always going to be decent, but like, it's not impactful enough, doesn't do as much as Change of Heart, and people will probably always choose Change of Heart over Mind Control. Necrovelic I just go into Bra, as well as Swords of Concealing Light. I just keep these cards here to like, put them here in Bra. <laughs> For my entertainment, that's pretty much it. I mean, Necro Valley was great in tier format, so like, they they have impacts, but not in this format. Then we have Santa Claus. I pretty much said everything I wanted to say about these types of cards. I think Santa Claus is not bad compared to Kaiju's. I like it, especially in specific decks like Branded, where you can utilize the attribute and you can just put it in defense and just chill. You can make a Zeus in other decks, and um, of course you probably get rid of it so they don't get the draw either. So. I don't know. I like it. I like Santa Claus. Not just because it's actually Santa Claus, which is hilarious to me, but that's besides the point. Then we have Skill Drain. Um, this one should probably go at the top of specific. The card is really strong because Labyrinth can utilize it and play around it, so it makes Labyrinth even a worse threat <laughs> because of it. So really nice card, but specific, of course. Then we have Judgment. I feel like Judgment will always be strong inside in a board breaker heavy format, so going first you just put it in cross your fingers and pray that you draw it when people put in cards like i don't know ruler or something against you so yeah judgment should probably go in strong inside um then we have summon limit um again a floodgate right so i don't know we can put it in decent maybe not bad but in the last format you would see it in decks like if I'm not mistaken, Pearly played it because they could, and there's other decks like Kashira also. I might, I might be wrong, but like I think I think it's decent. Super polymerization specific, 100% has a lot of impact, but not not every single deck can actually play it. Branded is really nice together with super polymerization because you have enough space to play cards like Garura, Majagan, and also Dragostapelia inside your extra deck anyway. So then you just use Dragostapelia as a super poly target. So it's serving double purpose. Super poly is nice, like, I like it in that deck in particular, but that's like probably one of the only ones, so specific. And then we have talents. I think this one is strong in main, so like we need to keep in mind that um, board breakers are going to be strong, but hand traps still have some impact. And I feel like cards like Ash and Nibiru even, and even Bell to an extent people play it, there's Droll as well. Like hand traps will still be a thing and not only hand traps talents is not bad going second and uh, going first of course it's amazing and like i said hand traps are still gonna be here and i think it should be in in people's main decks and then after some time if things change it could move to the side or fall off completely but we're just gonna have to wait and see and then we are only left with two more cards which is ultimate slayer and also tasking i think tasking is um actually strong inside or specific because i'll put it at the top of specific um why because in sky striker you can actually main deck it so i feel like it, it would be wrong to just put it in strong inside and just generalize it like that because um, tasking when you're able to i think it really shines when you're able to go for non-engine as well as engine and Kashira was great at just going for, you know, terraforming or even cards like the Ruma Karma Cannon, which is engine and non-engine. So I really, really like this. Sky Checker, like I said, is able to utilize it. And I think the card is strong, especially with many cards on this list being normal spells and trap cards over here at the top categories. So I think it's nice. And then Ultimate Slayer is actually kind of weird, right? Because it was always, it always felt like this card that has so much potential, but but it just wasn't the time for it. And I feel like right now, it, it actually might be, right? We have some very decent cards to send, and there's a lot of decks right now at the top levels where Ultimate Slayer could probably be useful against them. But my issue was always the fact that you have to play so many cards as like quote unquote targets for, for Ultimate Slayer. So, I'll just put it in specific, but I'll put it like here 
maybe maybe that's just me being like hopefully we see this card in the format because i like it although i would probably just be pissed if it's used against me but but like i think ultimate slayer is interesting i think it has potential and yeah that's pretty much it let me go through the list again if there's anything that i feel like is placed weirdly um but I actually think it makes a lot of sense. The floodgates are the only thing that kind of annoys me because I never know when to where to place them. So like you can you can help me out with that. Share your thoughts. Share your thoughts about the tier list overall, of course. And if you liked it, please make sure to give the video a like. It lets me know you like you like me making these tier lists. And um, yeah, you know, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.